Welcome everyone. Uh, we are the Missouri Miners team. We're from Missouri University of Science and Technology. Um, it's a small engineering school in Rolla, Missouri. And the mascot of our school is uh, Joe Miner. So our iGEM team's mascot is Joe Microbe. Um, we are a student organization at SNT, and we're also a student design team at SNT. It's a really important tradition on our campus. Um, so our team is completely student run, which means we develop our own project proposals, we select our own projects, we work in our own lab space. Um, so this year's project that we selected is adjustable multi-enzyme to cell surface anchoring protein. And here to tell you about it is David Pullman. He's the vice president of our team. Ailey Abel, our lab manager. Emily Paleo, a rising student on our team. And myself, Amanda Foster, the president of the team. David's going to start out by introducing the project. Hello, everyone. The inspiration for our project came from coming up with an idea to aid in the struggle against drug-resistant tuberculosis. Mycobacterium tuberculosis produces a mycolic acid coating that protects the cells from the host immune system and also makes antibiotic treatment extremely difficult. One of the main factors in drug resistance, oh wow, never mind. Our solution to, our solution to this <coughs> is to engineer E. coli to be able to break down these mycolic, mycolic acid coatings, but our, ch but our challenge to this is to, do, to make a system that will efficiently break down the mycolic acid coating extracellularly. <coughs> Clostridium thermocellum Clostridium thermocellum produces a naturally produces a scaffolding system called the cellulosome that greatly increases the it greatly increases There are eight key features of this, of this mushroom from the cell construct, which is there is a S layer bind, binding protein called SDBA, which is a type 2 cohesion um, binding, type 2 cohesion region that binds to the type 2 doctor region of the scaffolding protein, which is F6A. The scaffolding protein contains a cellular binding domain that will bind the cellulose outside of the cell and subunits in close proximity to your respective substrates. They bind the enzymatic substrate, substrate binds the scaffolding by means of attaching it to one of the nine type 1 cohesion regions, which is type 1 doctrine regions. Explain the entire project overview of what we're actually, what we're doing. That we Ailey Abel. So to complete this project, our team needed to accomplish three goals. Um, first off, 
we wanted to make the gram positive anchoring module of Clostridium thermocellum compatible with the gram negative bacteria E. coli. To do this, we decided we would replace the, the, the um, binding module, which is an S layer binding module of Clostridium thermocellum with a transmembrane po protein. The second goal would be to reduce the overall size of the cellulosome's gene. Um, it's roughly 7,000 base pairs. We wanted it to be easier to work with, so we reduced it to about 2,000. Um, the third and final goal would be to compile a library of standardized cohesin and Dockran regions. This would allow us to make the scaffolding more customizable for any team that wanted to use it in the future. So to accomplish those goals, we needed to take several steps, uh, the first of which would be to combine the type 2 cohesin region of the anchoring protein with the transmembrane protein designed by the Warsaw 2008 iGEM team, the LP LPP on bay transmembrane protein. Um, this would allow uh, the anchoring module to bind to the membrane of E. coli. The second step was to isolate both the mini A1 and mini A2 gene fragments from the CYPA uh, gene, these, these, the parts, or these fragments were determined. We determined um, w the, that the, uh, the mini A1 gene, we needed the type 2 cohesion region, or Dockran region of the c cellulosome to bind to the type 2 cohesion region of the anchoring protein, as well as the first type 1 cohesion region. Um, for the mini A2 gene, or gene fragment, we needed the eighth and ninth type 1 cohesion regions, as well as a signaling peptide. Um, we combine these two parts to make the mini A part, or for, and these steps two and three completed or accomplished goals, the second goal. So the fourth step would accomplish was to make testing easier for the system, and that was to link type 1 Dockran genes from cellulosome thermocellum with uh, a variety of fluorescence proteins. So our team made or designed two parts over the course of the summer. The first part was the mini A gene or part. Um, it consisted of the mini A1 and mini A2 gene fragments. Um, the second part was the LPP on bay co type 2 cohesion combination, which unfortunately we were unable to submit to the registry. So to make the cohesion LPP on bay combination, we took the SDBA gene, which is the gene that codes for the anchoring module of the cellulosome, and we amplified the type 2 cohesion module as well as a short amino acid linker. Um, we gave it the SAC1 restriction site as a suffix or prefix and the standard iGEM prefix or suffix. The LPP on bay part already in the registry had the iGEM prefix and the SAC1 restriction site as a suffix. Um, we combine these two part or two fragments at the SAC1 restriction site. Um, the amino acid linker on both the LPP on bay part and the cohesion type two cohesion module um, made it so that the functionality of the gene is unaffected by the combination. For the mini A part, um, we took the mini A1 fragment described previously in the mini A2 fragment, and we amplified them from the genomic DNA of Clostridium thermocellum. We gave the mini A1 part the iGEM prefix and the SAC1 restriction site as a suffix, and the mini A2 part was given the SAC1 site as a prefix and the re standard iGEM suffix. We combined these parts also at the SAC1 restriction site um, and submitted them to the registry as a coding domain. In the future, our team would like to test the system using the fatty acid oxidizers and um, the fluorescence proteins. Um, we would also like to go ahead and make a standardized library of cohesion and Dockern domains to increase the customizability of the scaffolding. The overall goal is that teams can use this with, um, can incorporate enzymes of interest with as little trouble as possible. Um, and with that, Emily will describe the educational events that we Um, community involvement is a big part of what we do. Each year our team holds numerous educational events, ethical discussions, and we even created a course that is now available at Missouri s and 
Bio 375, Biological Design and Innovation, is intended to teach students how to design a research project in synthetic biology. Many great research proposals have been developed as a result, including this year's project. Um, many research proposals created by students in Bio 375 also receive funding from Missouri S&T's Opportunities for Undergraduate Research Experience Program and are presented at the university's undergraduate research conference. One of the major community events our team is involved with is Speak Up, Speak Out, a program run by our university's leadership and cultural programs. Last year, we suggested synthetic biology as a topic for ethical discussion, and this fall, we are working again with leadership and cultural programs to plan another such event. We also participated in a program for young aspiring scientists and engineers hosted by the St. Louis Science Center and the National Engineers Week Foundation. Our team was the only non-core engineering design team um, asked to attend Engineers Week. And during the event, we presented our 2011 project, the, micro the microbial glucose sensor, as well as general information about synthetic biology and genetic engineering. Our team also led a synthetic biology activity with our local high schools, science Science Olympiad team and with visiting groups at Missouri s &T. The activity explains how systems can be developed using different parts and how system function varies with the combination of parts used. It also demonstrates the concept of standardized parts for easy biobrick assembly. While all of these events impacted people on and off campus, this year our team not only wanted to educate the public but also to get people involved in and excited about synthetic biology through hands-on learning. Our Exploring Synthetic Biology event was developed for this purpose and um, was first introduced earlier this spring. Um, first, a presentation introduces participants to synthetic biology and iGEM and gives an overview of the synthetic biology process. Students are then invited to participate in a wheat germ DNA extraction using simple reagents. After this introductory activity, students engage in a plasmid modeling activity originally designed by the 2011 design um, iGEM team from British Columbia, in which students are given a chance to engineer a model of a biological system and explore how specific problems can be solved as well as how safety systems are implemented. The final presentation outlines current applications of synthetic biology in industry, agriculture, and everyday life. Questions regarding the ethics of synthetic biology were discussed before a final game of Jeopardy was used to reinforce ideas presented throughout the event. Um, during the event, surveys were distributed before and after the event for use in public opinion research, which Amanda will now describe. Uh, so the public opinion research that our team did uh, was actually done by myself and another team member, Erica Shannon, who graduated this past May. Uh, we were funded by the Opportunities for Undergraduate Research Experience Fellows Program through our university, and we presented this project at the 2012 Undergraduate Research Conference at ST. Uh, we won first place in the Social Sciences Division with this project, and uh, we also wrote a paper uh, describing the project, which is on our wiki if you want to uh, get the full scope of the project more than I can give you in the next five minutes. Um, so our, basically the goal of our research project was uh, to compare uh, a formal presentation versus a hands-on learning activity and educating people about synthetic biology. And we also wanted to explore uh, a religious versus non-religious affiliation demographic. Um, so we, uh, I'm going to highlight two of our findings for you. Uh, the first one was when we asked people about their personal approval of synthetic biology versus what they think that their community's approval of synthetic biology is. So as you can see, with both the formal and hands-on presentations in both demographics, people rated their approval of synthetic biology higher than what they think their community's approval of synthetic biology is. Um, we need to do uh, more research with a larger sample to confirm this, but this could be a false uniqueness effect um, where people feel that they're unique, but in fact their, their community could feel the same way. So we, we need to discover what the, commu the entire community's perception is um, with more uh, with more participants. 
Um, but if it if the false uniqueness effect is confirmed, then we could educate the public to help dispel this false perception that their community feels more negatively about synthetic biology than they do. Um, and if the community, in fact, does have a lower perception, then of course our goal is to uh, educate the community uh, as much as possible. Um, the other finding that I want to share with you is in uh, how participants responded before and after the educational event to see which, uh, which presentation style is more effective. Uh, so the uh, graph shows the percent of respondents who had a change in their answers for the various questions that we asked on the survey. So if it is uh, positive, then that indicates that they had a higher approval of synthetic biology after the discussion. If it's negative, then that indicates that the, the, that percent of participants had a more negative response after the activity. So um, we asked them how familiar they were with synthetic biology, if they approve of synthetic biology, if they trust in the safety oversight process of the research. Um, what if they perceive uh, risks uh, with the synthetic biology research and then how dangerous those risks are, and then the approval of applying synthetic biology um, for various uses. So as you can see, the uh, hands-on activity had many more positive responses and many less negative responses than the formal event. So uh, we think that this is a great start to encourage people to do hands-on presentations if they're doing community outreach um, in order to help uh, people get a more positive perception of synthetic biology. So. Um, with that, we're going to wrap up. Um, I'd like to acknowledge our wonderful advisors. They're our sounding board for all of our problems when we're developing our projects and trying to do work in the lab. Dr. Katie Shannon and Dr. Dave Westenberg, uh, who couldn't attend. And our uh, collabor collaborators at the BYU iGEM team, they did our mathematical modeling for our system. And of course, our sponsors, Photodyne, ExxonMobil, and various departments at Missouri S&T, our Student Design Center, Student Council, and the departments of chemi Chemical Engineering, Biology, and Chemistry. We're going to go to questions. Right, so, so the, goal, the goal was to reduce the size of the scaffolding. So we just, we chose the three that we did because they uh, were close to the parts that we needed in addition to those. So we need the type two Dockerin and uh, there's also a signaling peptide that allows for transport outside of the cell. So we chose the, those three uh, cohesin sites just because they were uh, close to the other parts we wanted. Um, okay. Okay. Um, we originally invited a lot of uh, local churches. We re uh, we sent out flyers and communicated with uh, about 20 churches in our rural area. Um, unfortunately, we had no participation. Um, we're in a very conservative community, so. Um, 
we ended up having to do outreach to the campus uh, religious groups uh, in order to get our religious samples. So we ended up um, only having participants from our campus. We were hoping to get participants more from the uh, community outside of campus. But um, so that's, uh, we just advertised to different groups and uh, that's how we got our samples for the two. Oops. Definitely. Um, we think that one of the main things is that with the hands-on presentation, as Emily described, it was the Exploring Synthetic Biology event. We had a lot of different things going on. Um, but I think one of the most important activities was the plasmid modeling activity that we did. Um, it really let people see how safety systems could be implemented in a biological system. I think that gave them a more concrete idea of what we're talking about in terms of safety of our systems versus a formal presentation where you can say to some things but people don't really understand it. It doesn't sink in and it might still leave them with an uneasy feeling about the research. That was, that was our idea. A main advantage of our system is that it will increase the efficiency of extracellular reactions. So we wanted to use the model to show how uh, theoretically the efficiency could increase. Yes, it was out of five. It was a Likert scale. I'm sorry, I forgot to say that. Yes. So basically our inspiration was using it as a therapeutic, but uh, the project really expanded to be uh, applicable to almost any uh, system. So.
that for our lab that is way out of the scope <laughs> of our capabilities in our lab. But that yes, that was the I, yeah. that was the idea, yeah. So introduce uh, the E. coli that's engineered to break down the mycolic acid, then that can attack the tuberculosis, and then the immune system can take over from there. Um, we did most of our work over the summer, so unfortunately a lot of our uh, manpower was not available. So I think uh, the people that primarily worked in the lab, our lab manager Ailey, uh, David, and Erica. Um, there's one, n yeah, also uh, one of our team member members, Nick Jen, who's not here. So um, the human practices, um, the entire team worked on the Exploring Synthetic Biology uh, event. The public opinion research was just done by me and one other student. <laughs>